And uh, I want to thank everyone for coming out tonight for this um, public uh, community meeting uh, that we're holding to bring some information forward uh, to the community, answer some questions that people may have about what the proposals are. Um, uh, tonight I'm joined uh, with um, my esteemed colleague, Chris Winslow, who's our vice chair of the Board of Supervisors, and Ryan Harder, who's the chair of the school board, and Jesse Smith, who's going to be running through the presentation. Uh, uh, what we're going to try and do is go through the presentation first and then answer any questions that we may have uh, that might be generated. Welcome to those who are watching Facebook Live. Uh, again, you'll have the opportunity to type in questions to our staff and they'll be fed to us and then we'll get the appropriate person to answer the question. If for some reason we don't have an answer, then we'll get your information to make sure we get back with you. Uh, to answer questions. I'm going to uh, toss this over to Chris if you want to make some comments, sir. Thank you. This is the uh, Metoica district meeting. So uh, as, a, as a neighbor right next door in Clover Hill, I just thought uh, I, I could be here and, and assist in any way I can with uh, uh, the presentation or with answering questions. I appreciate you, you all having me, um, Mr. Chairman and, uh, and Kevin. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you very much for having me here. I'm the uh, Matoica representative on the school board and currently serving as the chairman. Um, wanted to be here tonight to help answer any questions that we may have as it pertains to schools as we move through it. So once again, thank you very much for joining us this evening. All right, um, Jesse, let's get started. Okay, thank you, Mr. Carroll. Uh, again, my name is Jesse Smith. I'm a deputy county administrator for Chesterfield County. Uh, just a couple of housekeeping items, just as a reminder, uh, this be is being streamed live on Facebook. Uh, so if you're watching this virtually, please enter your questions uh, in the comments and we'll do our best to, to kind of pick those up um, after the presentation and, and sort through those. Um, in terms of folks that are here in person, we do have a microphone uh, centered on the stage there uh, for folks to ask questions at the end of the presentation. Uh, so please feel free to do that. A um, couple folks in the audience will, will also help with probably some answers if I need to phone a friend. Um, did also want to point out that we do have our county administrator, Dr. Joe Casey, with us as well, sitting in the audience. So with that, why are we here? Uh, well, back on September 8th, just a couple short weeks ago, uh, the uh, County Board of Supervisors and the school board uh, jointly met to announce uh, two new middle schools, one of which will be located uh, in the western uh, part of the county just west of Otterdale Road. Um, so tonight we're going to go over kind of the next steps on how we make that a reality uh, in time for the uh, 2024 school year, which is not very far away. So in terms of timeline, you can see there uh, the announcement was made on September 8th. Uh, today is September 21st. Uh, it's this community meeting uh, tomorrow night. Uh, staff is asking the Board of Supervisors to allow us to move forward with the rezoning necessary to permit not just the middle school, but also a, a school's campus on the property known as uh, Upper Magnolia. Uh, it's approximately 1,800 acres uh, that the county and through the EDA purchased, um, I guess it was a little over a year ago. Um, so as part of that, we need to rezone the property uh, to permit development of the school. Uh, over the next several months, we will come back out, uh, planning staff and, and myself, uh, uh, possibly some of these folks as well, uh, to have some community meetings to really get into more details about what that will look like and get uh, the community's input on, on what they would like to see as well. Uh, we do anticipate a January Planning Commission meeting in 2022, uh, followed by tentatively the board's approval of that rezoning application in February. And all that's really necessary uh, to meet that uh, the bottom line that you see there, the fall 2024 uh, opening date for that uh, new middle school uh, in Western Chesterfield. So that's what we're trying to get to. Also, Verb is here if you want to listen. Yes, sir. I, and, uh, Mr. Carroll's kind enough to point out that Dr. Doherty is also here from, uh, from the uh, schools, the superintendent. Uh, just to re recap how we, how we developed the location uh, for the school. So on this map in orange, you can see uh, the property that we commonly call Upper Magnolia was once part of Magnolia Green. Um, again, the county through the EDA did purchase that uh, particular property. Uh, eight sites in total were reviewed. Uh, and site five, which you can kind of see in the, in the upper right corner there, I'll see if I can point to it. 
Yep, Site 5, which is right there, uh, was the one that was chosen for several reasons. Uh, location, uh, the cost to provide infrastructure, uh, as well as how it would accommodate future growth and its proximity to some of the existing residential homes. Uh, for, from a geographical basis, uh, it's located just west of the subdivision called Westerly, if you're familiar with that, and kind of just south of, of the very terminus of Summer Lake. Just to put some, some numbers to it, you can see uh, this chart shows the eight different locations that were evaluated. Um, the lowest cost, again, uh, is number five there at $7.2 million to provide in infrastructure. Generally speaking, it breaks down uh, about $4 million to extend Westerly Parkway, uh, $2.6 million to provide wastewater improvements, and about $600,000 uh, for waterline improvements, about $7.2 million total but was the lowest cost of the eight sites that were evaluated. Little zoom in on kind of what that looks like conceptually. Uh, you can see in green the uh, sewer line or the wastewater line. Uh, in pink or magenta is the extension of Westerly Parkway. Uh, and then in that uh, teal or light blue color, uh, we show the water line work. And again, this shows the, the basic location of, of what will potentially be uh, a campus for could be for multiple schools, elementary school, middle school, high school. But I will say we are also looking uh, to possibly locate some other civic uses out there. Uh, for example, libraries really uh, co-locate very well with school campuses. Uh, but there could also be some other civic uses, fire stations, that sort of thing. Uh, more of that will be hashed out as we get through the zoning process over the next few months. One of the questions that, that always comes up uh, with any zoning application, but particularly in this part of the county, uh, is what are you going to do about traffic? So I wanted to make sure to touch on that in a little bit of detail tonight and just let folks know that we are um, actively scoping that out. Uh, the intent is not for you to be able to read uh, any of that particular map, but just to point out that as part of this particular application, uh, we will be performing a detailed traffic impact analysis or traffic study. Um, we will study approximately 20 different intersections um, all throughout this part of the county uh, and determine what impact the proposed rezoning will have on traffic. Um, with that said, we certainly do anticipate uh, significant improvements to the area road network, including Hall Street Road, Warridge Road, Duval Road, Genito Road, and Skin Quarter. Um, as part of this application process, we will be happy to share the results of that study, um, and we do anticipate that being done by the end of the year. Did want to touch on a little bit all of the active projects that we have uh, in this part of the county. Again, don't expect you to actually be able to, to read this particular portion of the map because I will drill down on some of these specific projects, but I think it, it helps to see the universe of, of what's going on out here. Uh, you, you can certainly see that we have lots of different road improvement projects in this part of the county actively underway. Uh, just to point out a few, uh, we do have Otterdale Road widening. Uh, that is slated to uh, be under construction in 2022. Uh, and then, of course, the three drainage projects, were, which are out for bid now. Um, and again, I'll touch on these in more detail in the, in the next few slides. Uh, east of here, so this actually shows uh, the improvements, again, that we have slated for more of the Clover Hill, uh, Mr. Winslow's part of the county. Uh, but again, you can see that we have sig significant improvements planned, including uh, extension of Woolridge Road, um, some widening on 288 southbound to, to Hull Street Road, um, and then again, some pedestrian improvements around Clover Hill. I'll touch on these in more specific slides so you can see the details. So the Otterdale Road drainage improvement. So this is one uh, that, that if you live out or near Otterdale Road, you have certainly lived through. Um, anytime there was a significant rain event, uh, I think folks that are in the area, particularly around Summer Lake and Westerly, would find challenges with traveling uh, Otterdale Road. Uh, through, through the wisdom of, of the board, we are happy to report that there is funding to fix that, and that is out for bid now. Uh, on the right-hand side of this particular slide, you can see uh, both the schedule and the scope. Uh, so we are replacing uh, th those three crossings. One is at Horsepen, one at Blackman Creek, and one at Otterdale Branch. Uh, it will necessitate closing portions of Otterdale Road uh, with construction expected to begin in spring of 2022 uh, with Horsepen Creek being first, um, and then ultimately completing uh, all of the work in May of 2024. Uh, and this would, should resolve 
uh, any of those issues that you've seen in the past along Otterdale Road with, with it becoming impassable uh, with heavy rain events. So we're, we are certainly excited about that. Another big project in the area is, is the widening of Otterdale Road. This is a section from Hall Street to Woolridge. So it's, uh, if you drive out that way or live out that way, you've probably seen the tree clearing that has been underway. So this is really the section uh, adjacent to where the Publix is uh, all the way to Woolridge Road. Uh, and it will be widened from two lanes to four lanes, similar to what was done uh, with Woolridge Road. And uh, again, as you can see, utility re relocation is underway. We've been moving power poles uh, and we anticipate construction to take place uh, in 2022 uh, with a road closure uh, sometime in summer 2022 with more details um, as we progress through those construction details. Uh, so this, this is actually a project that is very dear to here. Uh, physically, I think it's located in the Clover Hill District, uh, but this is the Route 288 southbound to Route 360 westbound ramp improvements with a park and ride lot here uh, at CTC at Hall. Again, the, the goal of this project was to reduce some of the queuing that occur, occurs on 288. If you've driven through there uh, in the afternoon peak hours, I think you'll find yourself uncomfortably stopped on 288 as you try to exit to Hall Street. Uh, that, as many of you may know, causes severe rear end collisions. Um, so the goal of this project is to relieve that and get folks onto to Hull Street faster. We, again, we, we certainly understand that it's not a complete fix, but it does solve some of those safety issues that we've seen in the past. Uh, again, that should start uh, in mid-2022. Another project uh, that is located uh, to the north of here, and also a very important one, is the extension of Woolridge Road from really Old 100 Road to 288. It's kind of the missing gap or the hole in the donut. Uh, you may have noticed that you could get off 288 at Woolridge but only had one direction. Uh, this will allow you to go the other way. Uh, so we're, we're very excited again about this project to believe it will uh, be a huge improvement uh, for connectivity in the area to allow folks that live in this part of the county uh, really a direct access on the 288 from Woolridge Road. Uh, construction is anticipated in 2023. This is a little farther out uh, than the, the the other projects that I've mentioned so far, but still a very important part of the road network. Another one that uh, we are currently working on is, is Woolridge Road just south of there. So really uh, between Genito Road and kind of the water mill area. Again, that, that existing section is two lanes. I know from, you know from talking to lots of folks out there when we did the original Woolridge Road widening, the, the immediate question is, well, that's all well and good, but what are you gonna do about the other section that's just to the north of here? Uh, so this is that particular project. And as you can see on here, uh, we do have that scheduled to start in 2023. Happy to report that we have had uh, multiple community meetings on that virtually and, and are happy to meet with folks in person if they would like to and, and are continuing to do that, again, with construction slated to start uh, in 2023 for that particular section. And certainly last but not least uh, is a project that uh, I, I probably get asked about at least once a month uh, for every one of the 20 years that I've worked for the county, uh, which is what are you gonna build the Poe Parkway? Uh, so I think we, we finally at least have the start of an answer for that. Um, we do anticipate at least a first phase of the Poe Parkway from it, really its current terminus uh, to Woolridge Road, uh, kind of north of the Roundtree area. Uh, being constructed. Uh, we haven't established the schedule, but we do have funding for that through, through the new uh, CVTA, or Central Virginia Transportation Authority, uh, which has allowed us to really have significant revenue for large projects like this. As you can see, it comes with a fairly large uh, price tag of $170 million just to do that uh, short section. Uh, the other part of that, so the remainder from, I'll just say, Warriors Road to Genito and then to Genito to Hall Street, for those of you that are familiar with the full plan for the extension, uh, some of that is, is kind of to be determined at this point. Uh, some of that will be determined as we perform the traffic impact analysis for the rezoning of Upper Magnolia that I referred to earlier. Um, that will inform some of those decisions and, um, as to when that gets done. I think from here, it's not really a matter of if, um, but, but more of a matter of timing on when that extension needs to be completed. So we hope to hash that out um, through that particular uh, project as well. 
So that, that is really the end of the formal presentation. You know, we wanted to go over the timeline and scope of, of not only the new school, but the rezoning and, and give you an idea of what some of those uh, infrastructure projects that we have out there are. Um, and with that, we will certainly, uh, I, I think I'll uh, kick it back over to Mr. Carroll and I, I think we'll, we'll open it for questions if that's okay. Uh, thank you, Jesse. Um, so I think we've I think we had two questions that were submitted and it looks like they've both been scratched out. Um, so w the first one I think was answered, uh, which was is there a plan to widen Otterdale Road? So we've talked about that um, and fix the flooding. Uh, and then the other question was um, how is the county planning to handle traffic to reach the new middle school? The new middle school I think we answered that question as well. That Westerly Parkway. Eventually, there will be two entrances coming into this. One will be off of Westerly Parkway, and the other one will come up from an, another, from Duval Road into a, 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 it's actually an approved zoning case that exists there already called Cold Creek Subdivision, and there will be a road that will come in from Duval, and the improvements to Duval uh, will actually be performed by whoever uh, decides uh, uh, to do the, the um, development, uh, and that's not been determined yet. Uh, but uh, you'll have two entrances in and out to get into the, the school campus, um, which if you've taken a look at um, the, um, the section of Otterdale Road where Company 25 is, as you're going uh, north, you see where they've widened the road the lanes are wider, they have bike lanes, they have shoulders. That's what we envision going all the way up and making it all the way through Otterdale Road because we want to make sure when we do get the school plan in place that the roads are wide enough so that both cars and buses and other vehicles can travel safely through the area. Uh, and again, also ensure that we don't have any flooding. Um, I don't see any other questions on uh, Facebook right now. So do we have any questions from anybody in the audience they, they would like to pose if you want. There's a microphone right here. We're here for you. Come on up. If you don't mind, just state your name. And I'm Jim McAndrew, and I just have a question about the schools. Will the schools be built using existing plans, or will they be a new school? Um, so for this one, we're actually going to be looking at a new design um, for the schools because we know that we need to build our schools, especially our middle schools, larger than we have before. Um, so we will be looking at a new design. We're not going to, we haven't built a new middle school. Uh, I think Tomahawk was the last school that we built. Manchester Middle. Manchester Middle. Okay. Um, that's right. Manchester Middle. But we do need to look at an updated plan on it. So I believe that the plan is that we're going to be looking at a, a new schematics for the school. Okay. I was just wondering what the additional architectural cost would be. Since we have so many high schools and elementary schools in the district, why we couldn't just use a plan from a, a previous one. And after that, uh, if we can skip to the Powhite, is the extension going to be a toll road? No. Not if, I okay. hope not. <laughs> Thank you. That's, that's my goal. And I will say this, and we've talked with the school board about this in relation to design work. You know, we may be able to modify the existing plan that we have for the Manchester School slightly to be able to accommodate what we want to do instead of having to go back to the drawing board and spend millions of dollars to redesign a school and that would be my preference first and I know we've talked about that. And what one of the other thoughts is also when we do build these a, a different model almost where we would reduce the cost of a build of middle school and additional schools where you'd also have some shared space. So we'd be looking at areas where a cafeteria would be large enough that could be partitioned off and shared. Uh, same thing with, uh, with the gym and like an auditorium, uh, even library space. So um, we're still in the early phases of, of that, but uh, no, no decisions have been made on that yet. You're welcome. Anybody else? Come on up. Good evening. My name is Amy Trickett. It's nice to see you. Um, I just have a question for the Otterdale Road construction between Wool Ridge and Hull Street. Is there any plan for a sidewalk or a bike path there? I was witnessing Cosby students walking home and they were in where the trees are coming down. So I just thought that might be a good idea. 
Uh, great, great question. Again, the question was, is there plans for sidewalk or pedestrian facilities as part of the Otterdale road widening uh, from Hall Street to, uh, uh, to Woolridge? And the answer is yes. Um, so the plan is to connect Fox Creek, where, that, where they have the exit, onto Otterdale, um, down south. So that section. Yes, ma'am. Great. Thank you. Good question. Come on up. Good evening. My question is, given the amount of new construction that you are approving all around this area <clears throat> and looking at the school, the overcrowding we have right now, have you already done sufficient studies that this will, this one new middle school will uh, solve the capacity problem? Because I don't see that it is. Sorry. Uh, mask sometimes gets caught to your face here. Um, uh, I think it's important to realize that the plan is to build two new middle schools. One is uh, Falling Creek Middle uh, uh, over there in, in the Dale District, much, much larger than it currently is. So we expect to have some capacity in, in that middle school, and this school is being built for the express purpose of relieving the Tomahawk Creek Middle School, which, as you know, pulls uh, from the western edge of the county all the way back across the reservoir. So um, yes, we think that this will make a big impact. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, we're looking at 1,800 was the last, uh, last number I heard for that size of a middle school. Capacity. And for the elementary school, I know there's a new school uh, in Magnolia Green. I believe that's almost already at capacity given the residents of Magnolia Green. Is next that year, is that, that's next year. Uh, yes, it will open next year. We do expect that when it opens, it'll be close to capacity. Mm -hmm. um, we do know that um, some schools that will be, see some relief from that would be Winter Park, Grange Hall, and I believe even some certain sections of Warridge. But uh, the specifics of that are gonna be discussed next month on really what the footprint's gonna look like for the attendance zone. Um, but you're right, that's why it's, it's great that we have this piece of land that we are looking at. Mm -hmm. Even though the middle school is gonna go first, we already have the land of the site plan that as we determine uh, that we can move things up. So we do know we're gonna need an elementary school. We do know eventually we're gonna need another high school. Um, and all of these two middle schools are coming off of our, our improvement plan, which were slated to happen after the bond referendum. So these are actually happened before the bond referendum. So it does move our timetables up for even more relief to be coming in the near future. And is the school board working with the uh, planning commission as they are approving and recommending for approval further developments, lots of townhouses? Um, as I'm looking at them and looking at all the applications that are in the pipeline to come through, and I'm looking at, I'm listening to you talk about the timelines for your, your schools. It doesn't seem to me that those are necessarily tying together. Is that? So uh, the, the growth rate in the county is about 1% a year. That represents a number of about 3,500 people coming to Chesterfield every year. We uh, generally feel that that is a sustainable, uh, I say we, the royal we, but generally sustainable from a local government perspective. We, we don't want to be a Detroit. We don't want people leaving. Uh, that would uh, indicate that we're doing something horribly wrong. So people coming here for, for good schools and for a safe community and for uh, you know, good parks and rec things to do on the weekend for your kids and so on and so forth is important and maintaining that balance is certainly important. What I think our demographer has, has said repeatedly to us and after lots of questions just like this is that um, we're getting older in Chesterfield uh, for the next 10. Speak for yourself. I, I, I will absolutely speak for myself. <laughs> I'm feeling 400 today. I don't know, but, um, but, but, um, but certainly uh, over the next 10 to 15 years, we are, we are slated to get much, much older. And if you look in the 90s, Chesterfield, every, uh, I would say out of every three houses, roughly speaking, uh, two of them had school-age kids. Now we're at the place where that's about a third. And um, 
So it's really flip-flopped and the number of units, you, when you see a unit, don't seek kids automatically because that's not, that's not what's coming out. It's, it's about, if you see three units, you might see a, a child. That's, that's, what, that's what we're seeing. Okay, that's interesting. Um, I work in real estate. That, that's not what I'm seeing, but that's, that's interesting that that's what you're seeing. <laughs> Well, what I would say to add to that, it depends what part of the county you're at. I mean, he's talking about is countywide. Um, I will say that uh, looking at the last 10 years, looking at the census data as an example, Matoka has had the largest increase in population within Chesterfield County with over 16,000 people moving into Matoka, which basically put us at the most populated um, district with over 79,000 people. Uh, most of the development that you see, not all, but most of it, were uh, developments that were approved many years ago. Uh, Harper's Mill and Magnolia Green specifically were approved many years ago, and, and they, for the last couple of years, have been the fastest selling, uh, since you're in the market, you know what I'm talking about, right? The fastest selling neighborhoods in the entire Richmond area, yes. uh, by far, and which has increased, I think, has increased our growth rate in Western Hull Street to exceed what's happened in the rest of the county. And so that's why we're, we're looking at these traffic studies uh, very closely um, and also looking at the school numbers, numbers very closely. As an example, if you look at what, what my colleagues talked about with Falling Creek and why we have to put a new school there. Well, it's below capacity, but those are older neighborhoods. So what's happened? How come we have all these kids all of a sudden? Well, because the older people have moved out of there and younger people have moved in with kids. And we're going to continue to see that type of cycle. Believe it or not, we actually uh, get a report every two weeks about every house closing that happens in Chesterfield County. So we keep an eye on, on, uh, on how many people are moving in. Um, and what we're trying to do now is something that's unheard of. We're actually trying to fix the infrastructure before we put the actual schools in. We're trying to, we've got a lot of catch up to do, essentially, especially in the western part of Hull Street. You know, quite frankly, the 360 uh, throughways plan that we're reviewing now is, is the, you know, there's some, some designated changes to Hull Street that we need to look at and try and fund in order to move traffic quicker out here in this area. I mean, certainly the Poet Park extension is crucial uh, and will help, and all of the other traffic uh, indicators that Jesse talked about, those different projects are going to help us to alleviate uh, some of the traffic out here, but we got a lot of work to do. And um, uh, again, uh, I will say that the, the Planning Commission certainly takes input on all zoning cases from the schools uh, and many other departments from the county weigh in. The, the Utilities Department weighs in, the Police Department weighs in, the Fire Department weighs in. Um, you know, there's a, um, this is a pretty significant process that takes place so that other departments have an opportunity to say what's going to be the actual impact. We know from historically, and Marlene's out in the audience, she can tell you, We've needed a middle school out here a long time ago. Yes. So the fact that um, you know we're lucky enough to actually be financially in a position mm -hmm. to move this ahead of a bond referendum. And now next year, we'll have discussions about a bond referendum, which will have a more com comprehensive package for new schools uh, dealing with maybe the elementary school or the high school uh, and other needs that certainly Ryan can speak to from the school side and other capital needs that we need on, on the other county, uh, the other side. And we we'll certainly, as that moves forward, we'll have community meetings to bring all that information forward to the community. Um, but I, I, look, I appreciate everybody coming out tonight. Uh, as people bring information forward to us, you know, I'm taking notes. Uh, and and, and uh, this is about, this is what a community meeting is about, is to give people an opportunity who may not necessarily think to pick up the phone and call me, but you can pick up the phone and call me or email. I might do that. Please uh, do. <laughs> Please I do, do have one further question. Specifically in the area surrounding Cosby High School, I believe you are in the process of considering a, for approval of something like six or 800 townhomes no. that are yet to be built soon. No. 400 plus two that are in the pipeline that have not come before the Board of Supervisors yet. My question is partly, as you look at those and you approve those or disapprove those, are you looking to maybe even defer them down the road so at the time that they are completed, if they are approved, they are going to come online as the schools are coming online? Most of these cases, for example, if they're even hitting us right now, Chris will tell you from his experience, it takes years before they even come out of the ground, before, they even, before the shovel's even put in the ground. So, 
Yeah, that is a consideration, is how long is it going to take. But I'll give you an example, and I think I know which two cases you're talking about. Um, even if, if, I'll say if, even if, for example, the, the one next to Cosby uh, uh, moves forward. You're talking at least two years before they even start any work on it. And there's another one across the street that's, uh, that's been approved years ago, actually. They, don't, they can just start building any time they want, which is on the other side of, of uh, Cosby. I think that there's a, I think there may be, um, I have a meeting on that later on in the week, and I'll have some more information on that in the future. So if we sign it to end when we came, are you going to be emailing updates to us? Um, I, I, you can, I, you, I don't know if we have a, a pad out there anywhere, Sheriff. There, we can. We all had to sign there, in at the gate. There, yeah, there, okay. there is a sign in. We, we will. Um, We've got that, stuff and out. I will tell you, I will also add that to my. I have a, a personal uh, email group that I send out to the district to the people to keep them informed of what's going on. Uh, I do a six-month update uh, on uh, things that are happening in the county every six months, um, and uh, so I'm more than happy to add you to that as well. And then. You know, most people, I think one of the things they find astounding is when they call me, I actually answer the phone. Thank you, I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And one thing real quick as you're sitting down, I could just talk to it, but uh, that is why it is so important that we got these ahead of the bond referendum, because this does move a high school up a lot further along uh, in the bond referendum. I know Fallen Creek, uh, you know, the school was originally built for about, uh, I believe, 900 students. Uh, you know, we, we do have a lot of more students there than that now. So that is going to open up more capacity for uh, further development in that part of the county. But specifically, I think you, you know this is, a, this is the place to be out here. And that's why we have so many people that want to be uh, in the Western Corridor right now. Um, but we do need to make sure that we stay up with the growth, especially for schools, so that we can, uh, that we can accommodate that. So thank you. I see that we have a, a Facebook question. Uh, it is, can you please address all of Otterdale Road? A two-lane road all the way up to 288 is not going to support the schools. Uh, certain, go ahead. Sure, I, I, and I'm trying to track the same questions uh, on my phone here. So if you see me reach for my phone, that's that's what I'm doing. Um, yeah, so it seems like there's a little bit of confusion relative to the work on Otterdale Road and, and whether it's widening, drainage, or, or what. So I'll try to try to clarify that there's really. Um, two separate projects. So one is to widen Otterdale Road from Hall Street to War Ridge, from two lanes to four lanes. So that, that's a complete part and parcel reconstruction, sidewalks, uh, raised median, the, the, the whole, uh, whole nine yards, uh, very similar to what was done on War Ridge. Uh, for the section between Duval and Genito, um, there are multiple crossings that will be improved. As part of that, the road will be wide. In other words, it'll have uh, good shoulders on it, uh, be, be, ha have normal sized travel lanes, but we don't anticipate at this point taking that from two lanes to four lanes. Uh, but we do anticipate widening in terms of shoulders and lane widths, that sort of thing, uh, both uh, with those drainage projects, in other words, improving those crossings, as well as uh, we do anticipate some additional work to be done uh, either with or prior to the opening of the school. Um, there was another question in here relative to, to the timing of those improvements and, and how do we ensure that they are done uh, before the school opens. Uh, so we used a slightly uh, different method of procurement uh, for the three uh, crossing projects, those were actually bundled and packaged as one uh, in what's called a, a design build procurement. Um, so we put a lot more onus on the contractor and we do a different method of procurement um, relative to uh, qualifications. Um, so we, we are going to get a very, very solid contractor um, and there are uh, specific dates included in there that, that will ensure that it meets the timelines that um, we discussed earlier, which will be prior to the school opening. Uh, there was a question that came in online. Number one asked, what's the projected capacity of the new middle school that will be built uh, in the upper Magnolia region? And I think we're targeting about 1,800 um, is going to be uh, what, what we're looking at to do. Um, as far as other projects that uh, have been approved yet, um, I, I'm, I will let one of the members of the Board of Supervisors speak to that. One of the other questions on here is when will we start the redistricting process or look at that? Roughly about a year out from when the school would open. Um, so we wouldn't even really start discussing attendance zones until um, un until we get really about a year out. Uh, Mosley Elementary is slated to open uh, the fall of 22, and we're just really approaching that now. So it's roughly, I'd say, about 11 to 12 months out is when we would start to have those uh, initial discussions on 
uh, redistricting. Yeah, there's another question here that, that asks about Westerly Parkway and changes that we anticipate to that. Uh, we, we haven't quite gotten to that stage uh, yet. We, we do know that, um, you know, we, we have talked to uh, Main Street Homes, who is the, uh, the builder out there, and uh, they are extending Westerly somewhat as part of one of their sections. Um, as we get a little farther along, and maybe the upcoming meetings between now and January, we can uh, expand on, on what will happen there. Um, I, I think I understand kind of where the question is getting at, though, particularly uh, in light of uh, student drop-off and all of that. We, you know, I, I know we do work hand-in-hand -hand with schools these days to, to try to accommodate uh, student drop-off better. Um, you know, that, that certainly has been uh, uh, a challenge uh, prior to the pandemic, but even more so now. So we'll, we'll continue to do that and, and try to ensure that those peak hour traffic during uh, drop off is accommodated for, whether it's uh, with queuing on site or improvements um, on or along Westerly Parkway. Well, and that's why we're trying to do the other road as well. Yeah, yes, sir. And, and Mr. Carroll um, also pointed out that the goal of having that second access from the south um, to, to the proposed school campus will also help to uh, relieve some of that congestion that occurs um, when you have one way in and out of a, of a school campus. I, I, I could speak to that particularly. I, I graduated from Manchester High School a long, long time ago, and I've sat on Bailey Bridge uh, Hill in an old 1987 Ford Escort for, for many minutes, and uh, we certainly don't want to repeat that exercise. Especially the Ford Escort part. Anybody else? Good evening, gentlemen. Um, Mr. Carroll, I'm glad that you clarified the point about the growth rate. That's often misunderstood. In fact, the growth rate in the Matoka District for the last 22 years has been double of any other district in the county. And so that's why we seem to be off in terms of the analysis, the data analysis in terms of students per household in the Matoka district or particularly in the Upper Swift Creek area versus anywhere else in the county. So thank you for clarifying that point. Um, I would like to ask a couple questions though regarding transportation. Um, I see Jesse that you've stepped up your game since you were in the transportation department in the Smith property. But it appears that uh, some of the transportation projects seem to be not prioritized. Um, seems a lot of the new improvements are occurring around where the bulk of the traffic is, um, but it's not where the, the, the highest traffic count is. And so um, from history, as I know, being former supervisor, um, one of the biggest transportation projects that's been on the regional transportation list as well as the counties for a long time is the widening of Hall Street from the Woolridge, I mean the Woodlake uh, Light to Otterdale uh, and the necessity of that obviously with the volume of traffic that's in that portion of the county as well as the need for the extension of the Poe White Parkway. So I do not want us to be short-sighted as we have been in the past not realizing the necessity of both of those um, roadways for improvement. So while it's nice to see some critical improvements that were never on the list or that they're occurring because the school's going to come, we're overlooking a major portion of Hull Street Road that should have been widened 20 years ago. Um, so I need the county to revisit that transportation list in terms of its priority and utilize the data analysis, not the political analysis that makes the determination of where monies go in the county um, for road improvements. So the whole street road from Woodlake to, to Otterdale should be priority number one in the transportation department um, because this type of um, rezoning that's occurred over the last 20 years, plus the fact what we have going on in and around the potential for this new school and um, other uh, commercial growth in that area um, definitely indicates that it, it, it needs to get beyond the priority list. Um, the other issue is the extension of the Pope White Parkway. Um, if you're going to take it to the Woolridge, I mean, everybody knows that Water Mill is off of the Poe White, but it does not carry the volume that Hull Street Road does. It never did. 
So the, the $9 million that was taken away when I was in office to go over to Watermill didn't help the widening of Hall Street Road to Otterdale Road. So that was uh, overlooked. We don't want to make that mistake again. We don't want to keep making the mistake of opening roadways so that there would be further development, which is great, but we're not solving where the rezonings have already are already there being built today, even though they were rezoned years ago, they're being built now, and yet we don't have the road infrastructure to support it. So my suggestion is for the county to, and the county administrator and the county folks within the transportation department and the county supervisors to uh, garner expertise, okay, of folks that do the public-private partnerships um, all over the country and all over the world to examine the extension of this po white from where you're planning to stop it and get it to Hall Street Road because it's great that you're going to provide a little alleviation for the water mill area and the genito, but it doesn't carry the amount of traffic that Hall Street Road does. Um, and so you need to make that extension go all the way to Hall Street. And so uh, you can look at it in terms of examining public-private partnerships and th those that do it in terms of allowing for tow road or no tow road or funding sources. Another way that you can do it also um, is to look at the bond referendum. Um, before I was supervisor, I recommended $40 million to Lane Ramsey, which they never did before in this county. They didn't think it was a good idea, but guess what? It was a great idea and passed hands down because people realized the need for infra road infrastructure. So if we do not have money on the bond referendum for road infrastructure, we definitely need to be uh, identifying those road projects where you are priorities and where the money's needed for the bond referendum. Thank you. May I? Sure. Sure. Hey, Kevin. I, I do want to address just that last piece. Uh, of course, we would. I would love to, uh, you know, snap my fingers and have how, how many uh, hundreds of millions of dollars is it to get all the way to Mag Green with from with Bo Height? Yes, sir. It's about seven hundred million. Seven hundred million dollars. So um, we have to do this in segments, and so this first segment is how much, Jesse? You're going to be the uh, the numbers guy. Yeah, yeah. We <laughs> we have that. Uh, the first segment to Wool Ridge, I'll, I'll look it up, Mr. Winslow. I think it was one. I think you're referring one. to Hull Street improvements, not necessarily to Poway. Well, you have, again, I want to clarify. Um, the where the traffic counts are the highest in the county is Hull Street Road. Everybody's known it for 30 years. So you have the widening of Hull Street that should be a priority, number one. If you can't make that widening happen, the only way you're going to alleviate traffic on Hull Street is to extend the Poe White and allow that traffic that goes out there to go to 288 to go a different way. I will caution uh, you, all of you, to put the figure of $700 million out there. That really bothers me, and, I, and because that's letting the public know that it may or may not be that. Until you sit down with those that have the expertise of public-private partnerships, it's sort of not fair to necessarily put that figure out. It gives a false notion to the people that it actually costs that much money, when in fact it may not. We, we've actually done that analysis I know, analysis but, but I've heard that Ms. several Murphy. times. We've, from, we've actually already done that. I understand. I've heard that several times from the county, um, and it, it, it may or may not be that figure, and so it makes it sound like it's an impossible uh, task I, I, for this I, I county don't, to... I don't mean to uh, suggest that it's impossible. But what I mean to, to suggest is that as a large elephant, you have to take bites of it to get there. And one way to do it would be to toll. I, am, I personally would rather it not be a toll road and, and have us get there some other way. I think uh, Chesterfield residents are told enough. Certainly the residents in my district are told enough the residents in Dale are told enough. I think the residents of Midlothian would, uh, would agree. Um, so that's something that we're going to have to discuss. But certainly, the CBTA has opened enough funding for us to get that initial segment to Woolridge. That is now paid for in the six-year cycle. And so we're, we're looking to add additional segments to the road. But, but the notion that it can be done immediately in one foul swoop, I mean, this is, a, this is probably a 10-year project at best um, you know uh, and Jesse I don't know if you have a you know if you were to do it all what it would take but I think it would be at least 10 years to get it all done 
So add some information to um, what you brought up. So um, first of all, it has been studied uh, both for the Poway Parkway extension and as I've shared with you, the 360 throughway plan that VDOT's been working on for the last couple of years. Um, and I've asked them to revisit those numbers because I don't believe their projected numbers from 2019 are correct. Uh, and if you looked at the document that I shared with you that there are other alternatives that they're recommending, I don't necessarily agree with that, on ways to solve uh, the traffic problem uh, on Hull Street. And some of them are different turn lanes. As an example, we talked about this earlier, um, and you and I have talked about this, the double turn lane on the Hampton Park Drive uh, going west. That's actually going to happen, but that's part of the Harper's Mill development that's required by that developer to do, and we're pushing for those improvements to be done for both to increase it from a one left-hand turn lane to a two left-hand turn lane and a two lane in. So that's something that is already financed out that they actually are required to do. But the other thing that's changed the game here is the creation of the CVTA. And so there is a, um, uh, right now, the uh, CVTA, who I, which I vice chair, I am the vice chair of, we are working on the prioritization process for regional projects and how that will look on how that 35% of those funds will actually be um, spent, how they'll be leveraged if, we just, if the CVTA chooses to issue bonding, which could then be matched by state dollars and federal dollars. And so we're trying to be very creative, holistically looking across the board in the, in the Richmond region through the CVTA to say, you know, with the 50% that we actually got here in Chesterfield County, in our piece, we've actually put a, a, a plan in place, a six-year plan in place on how that 50% will be um, allocated to work on immediate road projects that, that need to be addressed. And the Woolridge Road extension is one of them, as well as others. I don't have the list in front of me right now. But as we move forward with the discussions on the regional, there are certainly some big regional projects that need to be looked at. The, the Poet Park extension is one, the widening of, of, um, of 64 through um, New Kent. And I know that there are discussions at the state level right now to take some of the, uh, the surplus that they have and put it in transportation to try and deal with some of these transportation needs. Um, so we are looking at uh, all of the things you mentioned on how we can creatively look to fund um, the Poway Parkway and, and what that will actually realistically cost to do that, whether it's segmental or not. Uh, and then the, uh, and certainly the improvements on Hull Street West uh, from where they stop now at Wood Lake further west all the way out towards Otterdale Road. And so it's not something that's not being looked at. It's not something that's not a priority of the county. It absolutely is. Uh, um, and, it's a, and it's not something that's not known to all board members because uh, we have discussions about the, the priority uh, transportation projects as they affect the county. And I think it's hard uh, to ignore the numbers when you look at the fact that um, we've had uh, both a growth in um, you know 12,000 new residents in the last 10 years uh, in the Melothian district, 16,000 plus in Matoka, not all in Western Hull Street, but most, uh, and 48,000 people plus uh, as an increase in population in the last 10 years. And so, um, you know, the problem is, quite frankly, and I want to be honest with the community, you know, Chesterfield County is the second largest road network in the Commonwealth of Virginia, only behind Fairfax County, yep. with the second largest with over 4,000 miles of roads. Would, and some would estimate almost four billion dollars of un, unfunded needs that we need to try and address. Um, we're aware of that. It's a balancing um, act, uh, both to meet the the level of service that we need for the schools, the level of service that we need for the roads, and the level of service we need for public safety. Um, I appreciate you coming forward. Absolutely, well, I, I, I agree with almost that, everything you said. I appreciate the detail, and, and I guess that's what why I'm bringing some of this detail up because. When you quickly gloss over a presentation like this with some roads being done, the details are very important in terms of, yes, there could be a financing. Uh, let's look at financing options available to us. Yes, nobody wants, who wants a tow road? But let's be realistic. If one has to be, one has to be. If not, then if you widen the Hall Street Road, as I said, is that till you can get to that next phase, at least you're alleviating the 60 to 100,000, whatever cars well, that I'm go in that section. Well, I'm looking forward to the new trip generation numbers that they give us so we can actually see what the fall off rate is. And I'm looking forward to seeing what the fall off rate as it changes when you add some of these other um, 
avenues for people to utilize because there will be a fall off when you do the connector between Brad McNair Parkway and Bailey Bridge. It's going to put more traffic on Bailey Bridge, but right. you'll see significant numbers fall off and for those people who want to go south. Yeah, and if there's an infrastructure bill, let's yep. be realistic, if, if there's an infrastructure bill that's ever passed, and you'd sit down and talk to those with the private public partnerships that have access to some of that information, yes, you may not need to have a toll road, but maybe you will need to have money on a bond referendum and utilize the infrastructure matching dollars to be able to make that next leg to the Poe White Extension Hall Street happen. Thank you. I appreciate it. Everything you said, I agree with. We gotta do it all. It's just, we're gonna hopefully get the money. Uh, my, evening, name, sir. my name is Steve Kessler, and uh, just to give you all a little insight, if you look at the little rectangle right above the D and the A, that's where I was born and raised. I was there for 25 years till my parents said, we're done with Chesterfield County and moved out. Um, I graduated from this high school in 2001. When I started driving my sophomore year, from door to door, it took 12 minutes. By the time I graduated, two years later, it took over 30. Besides adding one or two lanes on Hall Street right through here, absolutely nothing has been done to the roads from there to, the, to here. And it brings me kind of to my next thing. Uh, you said people are not moving out of Chesterfield County. Absolutely, they are every day, um, especially out my way. Currently, I reside right across the street from the zoo. and probably 50% of my neighbors are ready to get away because the traffic on 360 headed eastbound in the morning is horrendous. Headed westbound in the afternoons, even worse. And it's, I mean, it's, it's dangerous. It's, you have some people doing 40 miles an hour in a 55, some people doing 65 miles an hour in a 55. And it's one of those things that I'm ready to leave too, honestly unless something happens, especially in that little 360 corridor. Um, with the other things that are happening in the county, uh, besides that giant yellow thing right there and God knows how many more people to the county, um, you know, when you look out our way, there's another meeting going on. There was a bunch of stuff tonight and everybody's heard about it, I'm sure, with them wanting to turn the yard works area in Chesterfield County into a large industrial park so to speak. Um, we've already seen a huge uptick right there around Grange Hall Elementary School when they made Baldwin Creek a no through truck traffic thing going to Taylor Road Landfill. Now we have tractor trailers running 45, 50 miles an hour down Be Beaver Bridge Road every day. Uh, it's congesting everything from pretty much Magnolia Green West. And if they are planning on you know, say approving a uh, industrial complex out there. The biggest concern I have is what goes with that. There's already a landfill that accepts, you know, uh, construction debris and things of that nature. Uh, I've heard that they want to turn that into the next SB Cox. If they're not SB Cox, I'm sorry. Well, oh, I'm just let me, let me stop you right there. Yeah. There's a lot yeah. of false rumors that are being spread by a lot of people right now. Absolutely, because, and I want to hear it from because. Yeah. Uh, they haven't called me, and everyone who's called me, I've told them that's not what's going on. Okay. Right. So, the R Works case, it's a, it's before the planning commission. You certainly, it's going to be deferred tonight, so they can have more community meetings, uh, so people can get better uh, informed about what that actually is. You're talking about a company that already exists that's moving from one site to another. That's what's mm -hmm. happening. As far as that landfill is concerned, uh, they are only allowed uh, to do commercial waste. Uh, and unless they went through a rezoning process, they're not going to be allowed to do residential waste there. Right. They'd have to go through the whole process again. And I got to tell you, I'm not going to vote for that. Good. And I'll tell you what, <laughs> um, I believe, I'm trying to remember exactly when it was. I think it was 2018. Uh, I've lived in my house now for 16 years. Um, the last supervisor that we had from Matoka District, I believe, uh, Mr. Ellswick, said he will not let a landfill going up there. What's sitting there right that, now uh, is a landfill. The difference there, and I'm, and not, I'm not questioning you. I'm no, just no, but, but understand what happened, okay? So understand the process, right? That was zoned in the 80s when mm -hmm. nothing was out there. And what happens, unfortunately, under state law is when a property gets zoned, unless someone tries to change the zoning, once it's zoned, 
it's owned forever in perpetuity. I don't agree with that, by the way. I think that, um, and I've spoken with legislators about this, that there needs to be some type of look at zoning holistically across the Commonwealth that says, if the makeup uh, and the population and the traffic changes in an area, and my suggestion would be over a 10-year period because we do a census every 10 years and it really gives us an idea of what it looks like, then there needs to be a provision in the law where a locality like us has an opportunity to revisit a zoning case that's been sitting there for 30 years. Unfortunately, they couldn't do it. And Chris was on the board, he can tell you, they, no one wanted to put a landfill out there. Nobody sure. did, but it's been approved. And Chris, you can speak to that. Yeah, I mean, so uh, to take you through the process a little bit, the county attorney said, okay, you know, and not to give the county, a, you know, you never say, you get nervous when somebody says the county attorney said, but we, we had a window of uh, basically a menu of things that we had to go through. And one of the things was basically the point of the section review process is, is the landfill safe to operate under the, it's zoned for it already. So the only thing it can come back is, is it safe to operate? So within the context of that discussion, they took asbestos off the table. So this was supposed to be wood, brick, maybe some glass, stuff like that. Certainly no, you know, county, other right. county refuse of any kind. And so once the asbestos was removed from the case, there wasn't a whole, I mean, our, our uh, we had a consultant look at it and it came back and basically said, you know, this is, this is going to be a safe, uh, a safe landfill. Now this is converse with the other landfill case we had when Shoesmith wanted to mm -hmm. put all that refuse into the, you know, quarry down there beneath the water table right. that would have required 365, 24 seven pumping of water out of the bottom of there. And then, you know, the report went on to say, uh, look out for ga combustible gases and uh, something to the effect of this thing could catch fire. So, I mean, this was <laughs> probably one of the worst reports I've ever read, but it was reading those two reports was a tale of two cities. And because they had the existing zoning and because we, we, had, we had no expert to say that that couldn't be operated, um, you know, in a way that was safe. And that was really what it had to boil down to was, was safety. And, um, you know, we, we felt like by getting asbestos out of the case, it was the best we could do under the circumstances with the zoning that had passed in the, I think, 19, late 1980s, I believe it was. Right. And I guess, and I understand that completely. Um, like I said, I've been here my whole life. I remember when things were coming up, you know, before the Board of Supervisors about, hey, they want to put a little subdivision right over here. Everybody was like, okay, it's just one little subdivision. Then that subdivision went to another subdivision, which is now Western Chesterfield. When I grew up there, it was the sticks. I mean, it was country. There was nothing. Everybody loved it. Um, and now you look at it and you see how it's snowballed. And that's my concern with the little bit of country that we have left out there going, okay, well, yard works, yes, you get a, a, a industrial permit, you go with it. Oh, we gave you one, uh, we, we can't not give the guy beside you one. And then this, like I said, the, uh, you know, a construction debris landfill, all of a sudden they're accepting other people's waste. They're trucking in construction debris from other states, um, things of that nature. Uh, it happened in Amelia County years ago they said, oh, we're going to put in a landfill. Y'all have access to this, 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 this. As it keeps going, they take this away. They take that away. They take that away. And that's my concern is what happens today, you know, it just tends to snowball and get worse. And, you know, like I said, I still live in Chesterfield. I've always been here. And I don't want it to get to that point. You know, I hate, I, I really not like to leave. I love this county, but all these things they are just steady shoving people out and I think a lot of the people moving in they move in and go oh, this place is so great and then they start seeing the other little things going on and they're like eh, maybe we shouldn't have done that and I talk to people who say that on a regular basis um, but yeah I mean that's that's just my concern is that it will start as one thing and then slowly progress the one you know going on down the line thank you and that's that's pretty much it thank, thank you, you.
Thank you very much for coming out. Um, there was supposed to be a representative here from the landfill. I'm not sure if they've, got, if they've made it here or not tonight. Uh, they had contacted me because they wanted to come to the meeting and, and speak. Um, I don't see them here. Uh, I think we had a couple other questions on Facebook. Um, Jesse, if you want to handle some of those. Sure. Yeah, I'll try to knock these out. Um, so what is planned for the Woolridge Connector? Is it proceeding? Uh, the answer is yes. So that, again, is the project uh, from Old Hunter to 288, and construction is scheduled uh, in approximately 2023. Um, there's a question about traffic on Fox Club Parkway. Uh, and I know you couldn't see the larger scale map, but we are uh, working on an updated study uh, of that. We did commit to folks over in Foxcroft that we would take a look at that um, a after the Ward Road project was completed, so we are updating that. Obviously, we ran into challenges with doing traffic counts during the pandemic. There's, there's ways to do that, but um, it, it wasn't the best time. Traffic volumes have, are returning to normal, um, so it's, it's appropriate to go ahead and, and do that, and we will certainly work with the Foxcroft folks on those findings. Um, and, uh, there's a question about sound barriers uh, for homes at the corner of Spring Run and Bailey Bridge. Um, there, there are no sound barriers uh, planned at this point as part of the uh, Bailey Bridge connector project. I'm assuming that's why that's there. That question uh, showed up at least. Uh, and then also a question about sidewalks on Bailey Bridge to Manchester High. Uh, there is some sidewalk that was provided from the, the Bay Hill subdivision to Manchester. Um, certainly, uh, you know, over the past few months, we've started to receive more and more requests for sidewalk near schools as folks have found themselves uh, walking. So um, we are looking to, to expand that program and, and try to provide some of that infrastructure, including uh, sidewalks, crosswalks, and, and just more pedestrian infrastructure. I, I think that knocks out all the ones on the Facebook Live. Uh, well, there's one at the bottom I think we didn't get to. So it's another question on uh, number one on the capacity of uh, what we believe uh, the new middle school would be. Uh, we're, we're looking at 1,800 um, for, the, for the new school. And uh, I believe the other part of the question was um, accurate projections to include um, rezoning projects that have been approved uh, this past year. Um, I don't have that list currently. Um, that would be something that we can uh, gathered together and we would be able to email it back to you. So we're going to have a copy of all the questions that uh, we'll have a, a copy of all the questions mm -hmm. and the ones that we don't have an answer to uh, we will get back with the individuals to let them know what the answers are. Ma'am, do you have a question? Hi, my name is Carol Cornwell. I have a couple of questions. Is there a place where we could download and print this presentation so we could look at it later on because it's a lot to see especially from the back seats from a distance uh, yes ma'am uh, if you signed in and i think you did i think i bet you we walked in uh, we will push all this stuff out uh, we're going to post it all on one kind of central website location uh, following this meeting so that folks can follow along uh, not just in this meeting but the subsequent ones between now and and january so yes ma'am and I'm we can we can I'm, get this out to you. I'm kind of new to the area. Which website would that be? Uh, so Chesterfield.gov. But what we'll do is we'll take the if you signed in, we'll take the sign in list and send you a link um, okay. where we will house all of these uh, all of this information. Okay. And um, also the all of the road improvements for Otterdale, they actually all exist on the website now. Uh, so if you go to planning, uh, you can see all of the design work, what it's going to look like. Everything's already there. Yeah, uh, chesterville.gov slash road projects will take you to all those project pages. Uh, there's tons of information on there, so feel, feel free to peruse. Okay. Um, as we were going through the slides early on, there was, a, there was some detail points, um, and there was one that kind of stood out as a, an oddball to me. There was a mention of um, road improvements for Skin Quarter Road. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't quite understand what that has to do with the building of the school campuses and the uh, Otterdale Road improvements. Yes, babe, that, that, that's actually a great question. Uh, so in order to accommodate the school, the uh, property shown, it's not all of it, but the majority of the property shown in orange uh, will need to be rezoned. Um, as part of that, we will do that detailed traffic impact analysis to show what the impacts are. 
Uh, in all likelihood, it will suggest that improvements need to be made to skin quarter. Um, it, it doesn't actually mean widening from two lanes to four lanes, um, but you know, I, I've driven out here. Skin quarters, it's a narrow uh, farm to market country road. I, I think if it's something we're gonna add traffic to, whether it's school buses or anything else, um, it, it, what will probably shake out of that is we need to have decent lane widths and shoulders on the road so that if you do run off the road, there's a recovery area. Mm -hmm. Out in this part of the county, uh, the majority of the serious injury accidents we have are those single vehicle run off the road where somebody just loses concentration, drops their tire uh, in a ditch and ends up hitting a fixed object, whether it's a tree or, or something else. So it's really to, to, to resolve some of those issues. Okay, so you do recognize that there will be more traffic out there in the skin quarter district. Yeah, yes, ma'am. As part of the overall zoning, what we will do, um, again, is that tr extensive analysis to generate traffic th from that proposed area um, and see where it goes and distribute that to the road network and determine what improvements need to be made. Certainly, uh, we do anticipate impacts to, to skin quarter in the area around there. Okay. Did, did I understand correctly that you were saying something about there was some rezoning necessary to make some of this happen up here? Yeah, yes, ma'am, that's correct. Uh, so Upper Magnolia, uh, which is basically the property in orange, uh, was zoned back in, <laughs> has a 1989 zoning case, but I think it was approved in 1990. Uh, what you see in that orange north of Magnolia Green, if you're familiar with the subdivision where the golf course is and all that, um, that was all slated to also be residential. Mm -hmm. um, the idea being now that it would be rezoned to accommodate the schools um, and then some other uses on the west side with the goal being really for more employment. Mm -hmm. um, the idea is instead of, you know, as, as the one gentleman uh, eloquently put, everybody hops on Hall Street and, and heads back east to get to employment areas. The idea would be to, to reverse that commute and have employment out here so that folks don't have to drive, you know, 20 miles to Innsbruck but, but would have employment opportunities uh, closer by. And so if there's rezoning going on there, why is it not possible to rezone areas around skin quarter, uh, and especially the concern about zoning being fixed and not able to be readdressed where it has to do with the skin quarter landfill? Uh, a particular parcel of land that someone owns, they have to come forward to want to rezone that. We can't just say, we're going to rezone your parcel for you. So if someone has a parcel of land out there that they want to rezone, they have to go through the process and bring it forward with what their proposal would be. And so is that related to the fact that the skin quarter landfill, as I understand it, and I'm, like I said, I'm new, so I, I'm just kind of learning here. Is, is it correct that the skin quarter landfill is actually owned by a private party? So we're making, um, some changes to proposed changes to zoning or or expansion of their permit even though it's a private party yeah that's, could you help me understand not, that a little bit it's not better? even being discussed there's not even a zoning case for that this has got nothing to do with the with the landfill whatsoever that is a that is, there's not even a zoning case coming before us to even ask for that the only thing that's being looked at in that area is there is another company next to it, which is called Yardworks, which is asking to move from the site they're on to another site. But that is a totally separate project, totally separate from the landfill. Not re they're not um, even owned by the same people. I see. So they're totally unrelated and there's no interoperability among them. Not that I'm aware of. Uh, we, we could get you the details on all of that. Um, those are sub different zoning requests and be happy to follow up with you right after this yeah. meeting and get, and get you all of that information. Yeah, the part that was a little confusing was that there's, there's a skin quarter facet to this other discussion and I wasn't clear how it related. I'm glad you asked the question because I'll bet you that someone else was thinking the same thing going, I don't get it. So, I mean, that's why we have these community discussions. I mean, so people can come forward and and the more information we get out to the community, the better. We're, we're, I'm about transparency. We're not trying to hide anything. Um, the person who was going to um, speak about uh, the landfill who did not come tonight, uh, is there a way for you to reschedule uh, that so that we have if, enough if, if the advice, community wants us to have a, a meeting with them, I'd be more than happy to work with them to set a separate meeting up to address just that issue, absolutely. Great, thank you so much. Yep.
Is there anything else on the Facebook Live that we didn't cover? Got a gentleman coming up. I'd just like to revisit for Steve real quick. Uh, what is the acreage that Yardworks wants to rezone? I don't have the zoning case in front of me. I mean, I certainly can, can get back with you. Well, I mean, Jesse, do you know what it Yardworks is? Yardworks owned the plant that is now the dump. They weren't industrial, right? What, what plant are you talking about? Yardworks used what is now the dump is where they At made, one their, point, where they made so, yes. their mulch and stuff. Yes. And they weren't zoned industrial. Correct? The, I'll have to refer to staff on that. I'm not sure I understand the, the question. Well, my question is, is uh, Yardworks had the plant that is now the dump. Was it zoned industrial? And if it was, okay. But if it wasn't, why are they moving to another place to open a plant and they want it zoned industrial? I'm trying to figure out what, what constitutes industrial. Yeah, I'm, I'm if they were, they were across the street from my business making mulch and they weren't zoned industrial, right. they sell it to the dump and they move down the street and then two years later they want to buy another property and have it zoned so, industrial. Do you see where I'm going with this? Okay, uh, so when you say the dump, are you referring to the, the skin quarter, the construction demolition, the debris landfill? Correct. Okay, okay. Uh, sorry, I was thinking. It smells like a dump. I'm across the street from it. My business is down 30%. No, no, I, I, you know, I, I was thinking the one up here on Warburg. No, right? no, no. Sorry, no. sorry about that. Um, Do you understand where I'm going with that? Yardworks owned that I, I and, and, and made their I mulch there. Yeah, yeah I, I mean. And then they sold it to the dump. It wasn't industrial. They moved down the street. Now they want to buy property and do another mulch plant there if they want it zoned industrial. Yeah, there, there was specific zoning for the construction demolition debris landfill. It was originally owned by the Stinson. It was called the Stinson Landfill. Um, I, we could certainly help and track down some of that ownership. I, I, I really don't know off the top of my head. And is there you know, anything else out there that is zoned industrial? Yeah, we, we, we could get you that information. No, um, I, just, if, if, I don't know if there's sure, anything. Sure, yeah, we, we do have folks here from planning. Okay. We'll be happy to. Um, I don't know if Steve Donahoe is still in here. Um, yeah, he's around here somewhere. And yeah, Steve will follow up with you. Thank you. Uh, we can get that, that portion of it straight. For anybody that um, has questions about that specific case, uh, Steve Donahoe is our assistant director of planning. Um, he, he will certainly be happy to talk with you one-on-one -on -one and or one on a small group uh, if you'd like um, to, to get more information on that. Any other questions? Any other questions on Facebook? Did I miss any? Um, there's two on Facebook. Let me pull it up. Will there be sound barriers for homes at the corner of Spring Run and Bailey Bridge? Yeah, t touch on that one briefly. Um, don't don't anticipate that as part. I'm assuming that question comes as part of the Bailey Bridge uh, connector project. Um, the other the other thing we could do is try to list all these questions and provide those answers. Um, you know, as part of a, an online um, online repository. Um, so again, if you signed in. Uh, Please, we, we will push that information out. And we could also, as a follow-up on social media, post where we will house the, both the Q&A as well as some of these other documents. So, so please follow us on social media. That's the plug for my communications media folks. Anything else? Um, well, first of all, I want to say thank you for everybody who came out tonight. I want to say thank you for everybody who's watching at home. Um, I appreciate all the questions. This is a first of probably many public meetings, as Jesse said, that we're going to hold uh, about um, these um, proposed uh, improvements in the area. Um, uh, my, and, and Chris and I and Ryan are always available. Uh, if you have questions, to reach out, and we'll try and get an answer to you, either if you, if you email or call. Um, you know, we're, we're here to serve the community. Uh, that's really uh, where my heart is, and that's where their heart is. And um, so, again, we, we appreciate everybody coming out. I want to thank staff. Uh, I want to thank the Sheriff's Department for being here tonight, keeping us safe. Um, and, again, uh, this is a, a beginning of, uh, of a conversation is really what it is. Chris, you want to add anything? 
I thought the uh, presentation was excellent. We had good questions tonight. If anybody has any um, additional questions about anything in, in the Clover Hill District, because there's a lot of things that are going on there that obviously impact Matoka as well. So I understand the interconnectivity, and I think it's one of the reasons why I got the invitation from uh, from my colleague, Ms. Carroll, tonight. So i um, happy to talk to anybody afterwards as well. Thank you. Yeah, and I would just like to uh, echo some of the same sentiment that uh, that Chris and Kevin did. Um, I think it's especially important when we start looking at, um, you know, the amount of development, but also the, uh, you know, the, the schools that, that uh, we're going to be able to put out in that area to, to handle that. Um, and I feel like, uh, you know, at least over the last 18 months, uh, working in collaboration, both of our boards have been able to put our heads together and find a direction and realize that we do have a large amount of growth in particular areas and be able to address it. And I'm, I'm really glad that we were able to, uh, head of the bond referendum, be able to get two new middle schools to be built. But that doesn't mean that that is going to be the end because when the bond referendum comes, there is still going to be money attached in the bond referendum for us to address uh, future growth with additional schools and uh, other schools that may need to be rebuilt. So um, just because we are only talking about one school now and there is more developments doesn't mean that in the future there's not going to be more discussions. Um, we really just announced this two weeks ago. Um, we're going to run with this one for right now, but uh, it doesn't mean it's the end of the conversation. Thank you for having me out this evening. Uh, thank you all for coming. Uh, real quick, sir, who was asking, the gentleman was asking about the, the um, yard works case. Uh, it's 51 acres. Uh, and they're actually not asking for it to be rezoned for industrial, so I'm not sure where that's coming from. It's a conditional use permit request uh, to remain agricultural and just to be, to be able to continue and, and do what they've done. Again, that case is being deferred um, uh, from the Planning Commission tonight, and they're going to be holding a public meeting. I would encourage anybody who's interested in that case to uh, attend that meeting, uh, and then certainly when it comes before the Planning Commission, and. Uh, attend as well. But if, if after you attend the meeting, if you have questions, give us a call. Uh, but this is uh, what I'm seeing here. It's not proposed to be an industrial site. It's a conditional use permit, remain agricultural to basically move their their mulching business from one piece of property to another. I think it probably gives them more uh, space. And I will tell you, just as a comment to this, you know, when you move from one site to another, sometimes you have to be careful what you ask for because uh, we have tighter restrictions now on, on the way these properties are used uh, than, it, than the other property that they're currently using. And so there will be more runoff and water restrictions uh, put on them and buffer restrictions. Uh, and again, that's all part of the zoning case, so I in invite everyone who's interested to, to take a closer look. Again, thank you very much for coming out tonight, and uh, I'll be here for a few minutes after. I'm, I can, I'm not too mobile. I broke my foot. I'm wheeling around on a scooter. So if it takes me a little while to get to you, that's what the problem is. So thank you, everybody. Good night.